Howdy ho there, folks. Uh, today is Sunday, July 11th, 2021. Coming to you from Roy's house and soon to be his garage. You'll see in a second. The project I have today is to talk about a laser engraver machine that I bought recently on Amazon. Actually, Amazon Smiles, because when I buy through Amazon Smiles, a portion of that goes to the Berks County Historical Society uh, as a donation. So, two years ago, I paid professionals to laser engrave this walnut wood slab. It's got my Schreffler family tree here on it. And um, I can tell you, oh, there's me. It's uh, It was an awesome experience, and I was really impressed. Uh, it was an industrial size laser, a 42 inch bed, and um, it had a jillion gigawatts, and it just smelled up the whole place, and it took 72 minutes in two passes to engrave that. So I wanted to sort of play up on that a little bit in another project that I'm gonna to talk to you about in a second. But um, what I bought was this Fox Alien laser engraving machine, the LE4040, but I've got the pro model. And um, what I did was I followed all the instructions to assemble. I assembled it on this table. Here's the remaining parts. I have four hex keys. And here's the case from the glasses that I have. Here's the box that I got with it. And um, essentially, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you don't need a whole lot of experience. It did help that I did a 3D PLA printer by Ender, which uses almost the identical aluminum extrusion profiles. Small NEMA 17 stepper motors. Um, but I could tell you, it's, it's, uh, it just works. It's not terribly scary. Then it gets into the software debugging, so forth. That all was exactly as it described here in the book. Then I went and I went to lasergerbil.com and I downloaded their uh, proposed software, which was painless as well. Everything went exactly by the book here, I gotta say. Um, pretty impressed with it. You do need to know something a bit about graphics, uh, you know, pixels, and you should be working in metric millimeters. Uh, this is what it looks like. So in any event, um, we're going to go out in the garage here now, and I'm going to talk to you about my uh, my project. Uh, here's the date code, 2021. Yeah, so it's pretty fresh stuff. So uh, with that, let's. Uh, it's a rainy day outside, and I'm not going to be cutting grass today like I normally am. I finished up all my grass yesterday because I knew it was going to be raining today. So let's go out in the garage and see what we got. And yeah, here's some rain. Here's my garage. Here's my big red Ford truck. Uh, yeah, what do we got? Oh, there's my vintage 1972 Harley Davidson Sportster little bobber that I have. Um, and here's my workbench. Yeah, there's the laser glasses. You're going to need those. Um, I got some tools and some stuff. Relatively handy. You got to be when you're in the cemetery mowing business. I own three cemeteries. Yeah, there's the Harley. I haven't ridden that much this year. I want to get back out on it. Um, so what I did was I decided that this laser engraver needed to have a, a flat surface to work from. So what I went out on Craigslist yesterday, believe it or not, and I stumbled upon this old Sears Craftsman from 1958 table saw. And the reason I focused on that was because I know for a fact that this surface is Blanchard ground. If you know what that is, you can see the Blanchard marks in it, the swirl marks. Right here they are, they're going that way actually, you see. It's ground flat and, and it's, I haven't checked it, but it's probably within a thou. And um, so I, for 50 bucks, I bought that, brought it home, assembled it and put together this station. You can see I have it clamped here on the 
two corners here and then I have it wire tied over here so that it's down at the bottom okay so it's critical that you got this thing flat because you want to keep the laser in focus at all times now here's the um, 30 millimeter gauge block that you use to focus under the head that's in the instructions you can see I got perfectly aligned there but the, the just behind this project was I decided this year to write my memoirs write my memories down in a book so in keeping with uh, my uh, German tradition where my immigrant ancestors came here in the United States in 1749. You saw that on the wooden laser etched board. I decided that I wanted to write them down. Now there's an example where I lasered my name in the uh, the tie down for this book. But uh, this, this I got on, I believe it was um, eBay. And I wanted the book to look old right out of the gate. And boy, did I get what I wanted. I believe this was made in India out of water buffalo leather hide. And um, you can see it's it's uh, it's got the look old and gnarly. So what I also decided was I was going to write it in ink, permanent ink with a fountain pen that I also bought. You can see the paper. It's 100% it's cotton, archival quality. You can see the, uh, the lines in it from they call that laid paper this could be wove though it still uses a mesh you can see the lines of the mesh the screening and then here it is the title page for my my writing it down and you can see i started i wrote a preface okay and i think um there's an image of the pages yeah i started chapter one you know i was born blah 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 um, but the gist of it was, oh yeah, there, I got a few pages, hard to And then here's my, my school years. So yeah, I'm going to be turning 65 this year. So I thought I'm going to write some of my memories down so that when I get done uh, and I'm past, the family will have something at least in writing, you know, from me. It's got 220 pages. I'm going to write on only the front typically. So I have 110 pages to fill, and I think I'm going to be able to fill them in 65 years worth of memories. So what you see here now is a graphic that I, I got on the Getty Images. I paid $13 for the raw PDF image of this ship, and I followed all the rules and instructions, and I want to laser engrave that on the leather cover here. Uh, I'm not sure which surface yet. Um, it's going to end up on, I think it's going to end up on actually this, this surface right here. So I'm going to have to make sure I can get this flat. The leather is, God, it's got to be three millimeters, almost two and a half, three millimeters thick. Um, but I think I can get it relatively flat underneath the head of the engraver. So what you're seeing here is my, my test pattern. What I've chosen to do was to use... And some of the YouTubers are probably going to take uh, exception to this, but I thought, what a great idea, a half-inch thick uh, drywall. You've got gypsum in there, which, I don't know. I don't know that the gypsum burns readily, but it's, of course, paper-coated, and the paper will burn real easy. So I'm going to shut the servos off now. i got the controller on so I can move this by hand so you can see. All right, there it is. So now you can move your axes. This is the uh, 20 watt, by the way, 20 watt head. Um, so I'm gonna just move these axes out of the way. I'm already done printing my sample, my test. And you can see that was relatively easy. You don't wanna go too fast because you'll back drive the steppers and it'll generate uh, voltage back into the control and you can blow something out. But um, yeah, this is what it did. And, and, and I have everything set. I'll show you the settings here in a second. This is what I want to laser etch on the, on the cover here um and maybe i'll even do some more embellish that but um in terms of the settings for this um they don't really let you go back and show the settings you almost have to recompile the the image from scratch but i can tell you i have the power set to only 20 percent of what its rating is and uh it generates the g codes it's just basic uh cnc stuff uh, xy 
you'll see the coordinates you know there's the go to one go to zero and uh, the s is the power see s 200 that uh, you go up to a thousand uh, which is 100%. I have it 200, so that's 20%. Um, and I believe it's going to do um, right by the leather because that's what I had it set when I ran the, the test piece with my name, um, which you see here again. Uh, and I think that's going to come out nice. Uh, you won't see those lines because you don't see them here. You, this is a basically what you see is what you get. Uh, here's your zero zero point, which your zero zero point then is over here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, stop yapping. I'm going to have a 30 second. Uh, you'll see the actual footage of this test piece, and then I'm going to append to that the actual leather leather work when I get get to that point today, and then uh, we'll go from there. So stay tuned, folks. Thanks. Okay, folks, we're back in Roy's garage again, looking in on the project here with the Fox Alien laser engraver. And as you can see, I took the plunge and I'm engraving on my leather book that we talked about. And one thing I can point out here is that I had to essentially clamp the book so it would be essentially parallel so the focus stayed in. Um, another thing I want to point out, as you can see it here, it's very quiet. You can see the um, X axis moving. Here's your Y axis steppers. They're they're barely moving. Um, I set the resolution higher from my original uh, drywall. Plan. The resolution I bumped up from a 6 to an 8. The max is 20. Uh, the other thing I changed was I scaled it up a little bit. I had it originally set for 100 millimeter width, which is from here to here. I bumped it up to 120. And then it gives me a Y of um, maybe 145, which, which I had the room for it. So I decided to print a little bit bigger. I wanted the lettering text to come out. You see the word begun 2021 on there. Now, the only thing I'm really, say, even pissed off about is you can see here these fine lines. And that was caused by what they call over here in the software panel. You can run a thing called frame. And what it does is it shows you your, your outline of, or your frame of your print area. And on my test with the drywall, when I framed it, it left absolutely no trace. Even though I could see the laser was lit, you know, really dimly blue, let's say. But when I went to switch to the leather and I did the framing, it actually, that light blue burned the uh, leather. So apparently the leather is a little, a little easier to burn than, uh, than the paper on the drywall. So a little word of caution there. If you're going to frame, make sure, uh, you know, you know that it might leave a line. Um, I might be able to buff it out uh, by hand, scratch it at the surface, you know. We'll have to see when it's complete, but uh, here's a shot of the, the software. What it's doing is, um, you'll see a plus symbol. Yeah, it's up here now. That's actually tracing the line of the, uh, as it's doing its multiple passes. It's about, it's starting to do my name now. You can see that. And then of course your G codes are flying by here. Step by step, you still see I have it set for S200, which is 20% power. I, this thing would burn through the leather, I think, at 100% power. Um, I never tested that yet, but I can tell you this thing's 
really impressive. Um, and again, I jacked up the resolution because originally the uh, there was a little bit of as teching uh, in some of the um, text. So when I bumped it up, again, this is what you see is what you get. It 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 smoothed out the lines quite a bit. Um, I think it it tends to hang on there a little longer, so it might burn a little deeper. Uh, so you're really gonna have to experiment and play with it. But uh, essentially, um, I think I'm getting what I what I expected and what I see. See, it's doing the bottom part of my name now. And uh, so far it's been very reliable, very smooth. You know, I'm, I'm quite impressed, I gotta tell you. Really, really impressed with this thing. Um, again, you wanna be as square and flat as possible. Uh, so you gotta go out of your way to, to get yourself a good setup like this on a really flat surface. And uh, you should be happy. All right. Thanks for indulging me, folks.